This is a continuation of the optimization videos that I've been doing. What we've discussed so far is how to optimize profit. And in order to optimize profit, we look at the profit function, which is the revenue, the money we bring in, minus the cost, the cost of materials that we have to put down in the first place in order to sell our product and gain a profit from it. So the cost is something is the money that we have to put down in the first place to produce the objects that we are selling. In this case, I have a rectangular box with an open top, and it needs to have a volume of 12 cubic feet. The length of the box is three times its width. Material for the base costs $4 per square foot. Material for the sides costs $3 per square foot. Now, we're not going to talk about the profit off of this box that we're creating. That's our product. It's a box. Yes, I know. It's not the most interesting thing in the world, but still. So the first question is find the critical value that will minimize the cost to produce the box. So we're not really focusing on profit. We're focused on minimizing our cost because if we minimize the cost for the materials that we need to create our product, well, that's going to help our profit out in the end. The second thing we're going to do is verify that that critical value is in fact a minimum because we need it to be a minimum. We need it to be a minimum in order to minimize the cost. Thirdly, we're going to minimize the cost to produce the box, and then we're going to find the dimensions of the box that will also help to minimize that cost. So using this information here, I'm just going to show the, the dimensions of my box here. We were told that the length of the box is three times its width. So if this is the width x, then the length here is three times that, that length x, or width x, I should say. And this is the length here, so x is my width. 3x is my length, and we're not told anything about the height of this box. This is all we're told with regards to their dimensions. Now, what else are we told? We're told that the material for the base costs $4 per square foot. That's the base. That's this bottom here. And remember, this is an open top box, so there's nothing on top here. This is an open box. Material for the sides cost $3 per square foot. So one, two, three, four sides all around. All of that material costs $3 per square foot. Now, if I'm going to minimize the cost, well, that means I need to find a cost function. And in order to find the cost function, I need to do this. C of X, that's your cost function. What is the total cost? How much is this going to cost me to build? Well, it's going to be the cost of the base. So how much is it going to cost me to create this base? Plus the cost of the long side. So that's this right side here and this left side here. Plus the cost of the small sides. That's this side here and this side here. We can't just find one side and then multiply it by four because the sides are different sizes. So what is the cost of each one of these three things? So if we look at the cost of the base, well, that's going to be the price, which is $4 per square foot. That's where this 4 comes from. And then you're going to multiply that by the area of the base. The area of the base is x times 3x. That's the cost of the base. Plus, the cost of this side here, remember that the sides cost $3 per square foot. So this is going to be $3 multiplied by 3x times h. That is the area of that side. Now, as I write it here, you'll notice that I have 3 times 3x times h, but I also have a 2 in front here. That's because there are two sides. You see that? Two sides that are, in fact, oops, sorry, that are, in fact, the same dimensions. Therefore, I can just multiply that cost by 2, and that'll cover both of those sides. And thirdly, the cost of the small sides. As you can see, I have my two sides highlighted here. The cost of those two sides, that's going to be $3 per square foot. There are two of them, and their dimensions are x times h. That's the width times the height, and that's written right over here. So make sure you understand where these numbers come from, and then we're going to simplify this c of x function to, be some, to look a little bit uh, more organized. So we're going to use our algebra skills to simplify this down. 4 times 3 is 12. x times x is x squared. 2 times 3 times 3, that's 18. And then x times h remains as it is. 2 times 3 is 6. x times h is xh. 
Now you'll notice here that we have like terms of x, h, so we can combine those and we get our cost function, which is 12x squared plus 24x, h. And we want to find the critical value that will minimize this cost function, which means we have to take its derivative. But in order to take the derivative, we have to make sure that all of our variables are the same, because that makes taking the derivative a lot easier. See this h right here? We don't want this to be an h. Is there a way that we can represent that h as x's? Can we represent that h in terms of the other variables? Well, you notice here that we were told in the very beginning of the problem that the rectangular box needs to have a volume of 12 cubic feet. So what I can do is I can take the volume formula, which is v is equal to length times width times height. Well, I know the volume. I know v. v is 12 because the volume is 12 cubic feet. I also know that my length is 3x. I know that my width is x. And I know that my height is h. Now I can use this equation to solve for h. x times x is 3x squared times h. And if I were to divide this 3x squared over to the other side, that would give me h is equal to 12 over 3x squared, which would then reduce to 12 divided by 3 is 4 over x squared. So I can take 4 over x squared, and I can substitute it right in there for h. And you can see how I made that change right there. One more simplification I'm going to make here, 24 times 4 and x divided by x squared. If we do that correctly, we will get our c of x function, that is our cost function of 12x squared plus 24 times 4 is 96, and x divided by x squared is x to the negative 1 power. This is your cost function, and that is the thing that you need to optimize. And as we said earlier, in order to optimize this function, we are going to need to take its first derivative. So here's my cost function, and here is the derivative of the cost function. This is just power rule here. We take this 2, and we bring it down to the 12. 12 times 2 is 24, and then we reduce 2 by 1, so that reduces to 24x. Over here, this negative 1 multiplies the 96, making this negative 96. Negative 1 reduces by 1, giving us a negative 2. So this is the derivative of our cost function. In order to find the critical value, we are going to set this equal to 0, and we are going to solve for x. So when we set that equal to 0, I will add the 96x to the negative 2 over to the other side. Now, I want to get those x's isolated as soon as possible, so I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to multiply both sides by x squared, and that will cancel out these two x's here, because think about what x to the negative 2 means. It means 1 over x squared. So if I multiply both sides by x squared, that will cancel these two out, leaving me with just 96. And x squared times x gives me x cubed. At 24x cubed equals 96, I divide the 24 over to the other side, giving me 48. And then to move over this cube, I bring over to the 48 1 over 3, or that's also the same thing as taking the cubed root. Now if I put that into my calculator, I will get a critical value of 1.6. So this is going to be my x value, or my critical value, that will allow me to minimize the cost to produce this box. But how am I sure that this is a minimum? Well, let's go back to our second question. To verify that the critical value is, in fact, a minimum. Well, we can use the second derivative test in order to verify this. So I take the second derivative of c of x. So we start from the first derivative. The derivative of 24x is just 24. And the derivative of negative 96x to the negative 2. Well, the negative 2 will multiply negative 96, giving me a positive 192. That's why this is a plus sign here. And x to the negative 2, well, that negative 2 will reduce by 1, making it x to the negative 3. We're going to take our critical value of 1.6, and we plug it into the second derivative, just like we do here. And remember what this means, a negative 3 for our exponent. That means that 1.6 is going to move down into the denominator. So 192 is a positive number. 1.6 cubed is a positive number. A positive divided by a positive, this is a positive number. 
and this positive 24 is being increased by another positive number. So all of this is greater than zero. This is going to be a positive result here. And when we plug in our critical value into the second derivative to get a positive value, we know that that point on our function is concave up. That area around the function or at that point 1.6 is concave up, meaning that this point right here of 1.6 is going to be a minimum. And that is how you verify that the critical value is a minimum and how it will minimize the cost to produce this box. Now, how do we use this answer to answer uh, questions three and four? Well, here are questions three and four. Minimize the cost to produce the box. What is the smallest amount of money I can spend on the materials to create this box and put it out for sale? Well, uh, here's my cost function that we found earlier. This is c of x is equal to 12x squared plus 96x to the negative 1. If you forget where this came from, just go back in the video a little bit and you'll see where it com comes from. That's what we calculated as our cost function. And, well, what do you think this is? This is our x. Well, we found x. We found x to be our critical value of 1.6. So plug 1.6 into the cost function like so, and we get an answer of $90.72. That means that this box is going to cost us $90.72 to produce. That is the smallest amount of money that it will cost us to produce. If I were to use different dimensions or, or something of that nature, then maybe this, this wouldn't be the cost. Maybe it would be $100 to, to create this box. Maybe it would be $120 or $150 to, to build this box and put it up for sale. But this is the smallest amount of money that I'm going to put out to buy the materials to build this box. And finally, find the dimensions of the box that will minimize the cost. Well, if we recall, our dimensions of length were 3x, width were x, and height was 4 over x squared. Again, that's all from the beginning of the problem, so you can turn back in this video if you want. Just scroll on back and see where those things came from. Well, the length, remember that was this guy right here. That's 3x. The width was this guy right here. That's x. Here was the height. We found that to be 4 over x squared. They all have x's, don't they? Do we know what x is? Absolutely we do. We found our x, or our critical value, to be 1.6. So 3x is 3 times 1.6. Our length is 4.8 feet. Our width was x. That's just 1.6 feet. And our height of 4 over x squared is 4 over 1.6 squared. And that's, that's approximately 1.5625 feet. So these will be the dimensions of your box, given that we are going to spend a minimum of $90.72 for the materials of this box. If this was helpful, and I really hope it was, let me know in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed.